Hi James, I'm going to be taking you through a physical exam today. So I'm going to have you uh, take a seat on the chair there. We're going to start by taking your vitals. So uh, actually first I'm going to start by washing my hands. Um, but on inspection, James is alert, he's responsive, uh, no obvious signs of distress. He um, appears to be in good health and good hygiene. So James, I'll have you just give me your arm. Perfect. Great. Let's put these in. And just relax your shoulder for me there. That's perfect. relax for me. So blood pressure was 126 over 78. <clears throat> James, next we're going to be taking your temperature. So I'm going to have you hold this under your tongue until it beeps and then you can take it out. And I'm going to take your blood, your heart rate at the same time. And I can take that from you. So temperature was 35.4 oral, uh, heart rate was uh, 62 beats per minute, uh, left arm seated, and respiratory rate was 16 breaths per minute. So James, I'll have you move up to the table now. And I'm going to start by just taking a look at your skin. So James is warm to the touch, uh, skin has good complexion, there's no suspicious uh, masses or lesions or suspicious nevi either and mobility and turgor is within normal limits. And James, I'm just going to take a look at your nails here. Capillary refill is less than two seconds bilaterally. And taking a look at James's face, it's symmetrical. Uh, there's no masses or lesions. It's without any involuntary muscle movement. And then taking a look at the hair, the hair is fine and evenly distributed without any signs of alopecia. And uh, the scalp is slightly dry, but nothing out of normal. And James, let me know if you have any pain with any of this. No. Okay. So no pain on palpation, the skull is normal cephalic and atraumatic. So James, we're going to move on to the eyes now. Um, so first we're going to start by testing your visual acuity, and I see that you're wearing corrective lenses, so you can keep them on for this part of the exam. I'm just going to be measuring away from your face here. Good. And so James, I'll have you cover one eye for me, and if you can read that bottom line there for me. Um, four, two, six, seven, three, nine. Perfect. And can you cover the other eye? And just read that backwards for me. 937624. Okay, excellent. So uh, visual acuity was 2020 intact bilaterally uh, with corrective lenses. So James, now I'm actually going to have you take your glasses off for this next part. And what I'm going to do is have my hands behind your head and then bring them into your field of view. And I'd like you to let me know when you can see them, okay? So I'm going to have you stare just at the bridge of my nose here while we do this. Okay. And which one's wiggling? That one. Good. One more time. Yep. And which one's wiggling? That one. Great. So visual fields are intact in all four quadrants. Uh, and on, on, excuse me, on inspection of James's eyes, uh, the eyelids are without ptosis, entropion or ectropion. The sclera are white without erythema. And James, I'll have you just look up with your eyes. And conjunctiva are pink. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the lens. So James, just keep staring at the bridge of my nose here. Good. So no opacities or crescenteric shadows, and uh, corneal reflection is symmetrical bilaterally. And James, just keep staring straight at the bridge of my nose here. Good. And if I can have you stare at the tip of my pen light, and then focus on the back wall, and back to the pen light, and back to the back wall. Great, so Perla DNC. And then James, if you can keep your focus on my pen light and without moving your head at all, follow it with your eyes.
Great, and you can relax for me. So cranial nerves three, four, and six are intact bilaterally. Um, no nystagmus noted and convergence uh, also intact bilaterally. So next, James, is the uh, ophthalmoscopic exam. So I'm going to be taking a look in your eyes. You'll, feel a, you'll see a bit of a bright light, and you'll feel the tip of this just touch your brow. Um, but I'll try to be quick. Okay. So if I can have you just pick a spot on the back wall and uh, stare at it for me. I'm just going to brace your head. Red reflex noted. There we go. And we're going to do that one more time on the other side. So again, stare at that back wall. The red reflex noted. Okay, great. So everything looks great there. Uh, optic d disc and optic cup were visualized. Uh, they had clear borders. They were pearly, pearly white in color. Uh, no um, AV nicking noted and no papilledema. So James, next we're going to move on to the ears. Uh, sorry, you can put your glasses back on. Um, so for the first part of this test, I just want to test your auditory acuity. So I'm going to be standing behind you whispering a series of three numbers or letters, and I'd like you to repeat those back to me, okay? Okay, so can you plug your right ear for me? B, N, 6. B, N, 6. Perfect. And the other ear? Good. L, 5. L59. Awesome. So auditory acuity was intact bilaterally. And on inspection of the ears, again, no obvious masses or lesions. James, let me know if you have any pain with this. No. Okay, so no pain on tug test. And then we're just going to take a look inside the ears. So James, I'll have you tilt your head just slightly away from me. That's perfect. Okay. And the other side. And just tilt your head slightly away. Perfect. Okay, great. So uh, tympanic membrane was visualized, cone of light visualized. It's pearly gray in color without erythema and a slightly yellow waxy serum uh, in the ear canal. So James, we're going to move on to the nose now. So on inspection of the nose, again, no obvious masses or lesions noted. Uh, the nose is symmetrical and we're going to go ahead and take a look inside. <clears throat> so James, I'll have you tilt your head just slightly back for me and if you can take a deep breath in and hold it. Perfect. Okay, and you can breathe out. And we're going to do that one more time on the other side. Good. Okay, you can relax. So upper and lower turbidates were visualized. They're pink in color. Uh, no perforation or deviation of the septum. And a slight watery discharge was noted. So James, actually, I have to t get you to take your glasses off one more time. Just let me know if you have any pain with any of this. No. Okay, so no pain on palpation of the frontal or maxillary sinuses, and you can go ahead and put your um, glasses back on. And taking a look at the mouth, James's lips are pink, slightly dry. I'll get you to open your mouth for me. Mucosa is pink, good dentition, teeth are firmly seated, no obvious cavities, and can I get you to say ah for me? Uh. Uvula rises midline. So everything looks great there. And James, this last part is a little bit uncomfortable, but uh, we'll try to be as gentle as possible. So first, I'll get you to stick your tongue out for me. Beautiful. And can you move it side to side? Awesome. So cranial nerve 12, intact bilaterally. And now the uncomfortable part. So James, I'll have you stick your tongue out one more time. I'm just going to grab onto it here. I'm just feeling the sides. Okay. Perfect, thanks. So no lesions or masses were palpated uh, on the tongue. Okay, James, we are going to um, move on to the lymph nodes. So just let me know if you have any pain with any of this. Mm. Preauricular, non-palpable. Postauricular, non-palpable. Tonsillar. One almond-sized mobile lymph node on the right side. Submandibular, non-palpable. Submental, non-palpable. Posterior cervical, non-palpable. Superior cervical, non-palpable. And I'll get you to tilt your head to the side. On the other side. Deep cervical, non-palpable. And can you raise your shoulders up? And supraclavicular, non-palpable. Taking a look at the trachea. Uh, the trachea is midline without deviation. Coming down off of the cricoid cartilage. James, can I have you tilt your head slightly forward? Perfect. 
And can I get you to swallow for me? Perfect. So the thyroid is uh, soft uh, without bogginess or nodules and rises midline on swallowing. James, we're going to move on to the lung exam. So what I'm going to have you do is actually turn the other way for this part. And can I do the uh, undo the back of your gown here? Yes. Okay. So on inspection of uh, the back, there are several macules and papules. There's one um, slightly larger neva here. James, have you have ever had this mole checked out? Uh, no. Okay, that might be something to uh, discuss with your doctor at your next appointment. Um, it's not uh, too concerning, it's just slightly larger. Um, no use of accessory muscles on respiration. So James, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, check the muscles of your back. Let me know if you have any pain or tenderness without, with any of this. No. That's okay. So some slight hypertonicity of the paraspinal muscles, but no pain on palpation. Uh, James, we're going to go ahead and get you to take a deep breath in and out. Great. So symmetrical uh, lung expansion on inspiration. James, I'm going to go ahead and get you to say the words 99 to the back wall when you feel my hands on your back. Okay. 99. 99. 99, 99. Okay, so tactile firmness is present and equal bilaterally. And level of diaphragmatic dullness is ID'd at approximately the level of T10. A resonant percussive note was heard in all lung fields bilaterally. James, I'm going to have you give yourself a hug and lean slightly forward for me. And I'm going to have a listen to your lungs now. So I'm going to get you to take a deep breath in and out through your mouth with, when you feel my stethoscope on your back. And if you feel lightheaded at any time, just let me know, okay? Okay, good, you can relax for me. So vesicular breath sounds were heard in all lung fields. No adventitious breath sounds noted. So James, I'm gonna have you lay down next for me and we're gonna do the uh, anterior exam. <clears throat> so James, I'm gonna place the strape over you and actually what I'm gonna have you do is just, uh, yeah, you can pull that out for me. Good. And then if you just wanna take it off of your shoulders. Perfect. And if I can get you to uh, just tuck that drape into your undergarments there. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so on inspection of the anterior chest, again, no use of accessory muscles. Uh, there's no suspicious nevi, a few macules and papules. So James, again, I'm gonna have you repeat the words 99 to the ceiling when you feel my hands on your chest. 99, 99, 99. Good, so tactile fremitus, president equal bilaterally. So a resonant percussive note was heard in all lung fields bilaterally. And then James, I'm going to have a listen again from the front. So take a deep breath in and out through your mouth when you feel my stethoscope.
Okay, great. So vesicular breath sounds were heard in all lung fields. And again, no adventitious sounds noted. So James, I'm actually going to raise the bed up now. So if I can have you sit up a moment for me. Perfect. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to start by doing GVP. So James, I'm going to have you just turn your head to that side for me. And I'm looking for the JVP. So looking for that biphasic movement. And I'm seeing it right here. So finding the sternal notch. Okay, so JVP was measured to be approximately one and a half centimeters above the sternal notch. And then taking listen to the arteries. So James, I'm going to have you take a deep breath in for me and hold it. Okay, good. And you can breathe out. And then feeling for the carotid pulse. Okay, so the carotid pulse was brisk but not bounding. No thrills felt on palpation and no breeze heard on auscultation. Taking a look at the precordial area. James has a very slight pulsation on inspection of the precordium. James, I'll have you just turn over onto your left side for me. <clears throat> the PMI was located at approximately the seventh intercostal space midclavicular line, and it was about a quarter size in diameter, and no uh, thrills were felt on palpation. So, James, I'm just going to have a listen again. you can turn back onto your back for me. Good. Okay. So S1 and S2 were clearly heard. No splitting, no S3 or S4, um, and no uh, murmurs uh, heard on auscultation of the heart. Okay, James, we're going to move on to the abdomen now. So first I'm just going to lower the table back down. So I'll get you to sit up for me. Whoop. There we go. And James, I'm going to get you to find your uh, belly button and then just track down uh, till you find a bony prominence. That's your pubic bone. So I'm going to get you to tuck your drape into your undergarments and just pull it as close to your pubic bone as you feel comfortable, okay? Okay, so now on inspection of the abdomen, um, the umbilicus is centrally placed. There's no pulsations noted, no uh, caput medusae or distension of the veins. So I'm going to go ahead and take a listen, James. Okay, so bowel sounds were heard in all four quadrants. Pulse was brisk but no bounding, no venous hammer friction rub heard on auscultation of the abdominal aorta, the femoral, renal, or iliac arteries. So James, next uh, I'm just going to be percussing. So an tympatic resonant note was heard in all four quadrants, percussing for the liver.
So James, can I borrow your finger? Just landmark right there for me. Okay, and you can relax for me. So liver was percussed at the midclavicular line and approximately uh, seven centimeters in diameter. And James, I'll get you to take a deep breath in for me and out. So a negative splenic percussion sign. And oh, James, I'm actually gonna have you bend your knees for me. That's perfect, great. And we're gonna start with just a little bit of light palpation. So let me know if you have any pain with any of this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can to go a little bit deeper? Any pain with that? Just uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, it'll be over soon. Okay, so no pain on light or deep palpation of the abdomen. Palpating for the liver. James, I'll get you to take a deep breath in for me. And out. And one more time, in. And out. And again, in. And out. And one more time, in. And out. Okay, great, sorry about that. Uh, so the border of the liver was palpated, uh, it was without nodules. The next feeling for the spleen, so James will get you to take a deep breath in, and out, and again in, and out, and in, and out, and one more time in, and out, and one more time in, and out. Okay, so the spleen was non-palpable. I'm really sorry, this is the worst one, so I'll try to be as gentle as possible. So take a deep breath in for me, and out. And I'm gonna come around to the other side. And again, take a deep breath in for me, and out. Okay, thanks James. So the kidneys were non-palpable. Okay, so, and lastly, Feeling for that abdominal aorta. So abdominal aorta was palpated in approximately uh, 1.5 centimeters in diameter. James, you can go ahead and put your legs back down for me. I'm gonna be uh, just checking your inguinal lymph nodes now, okay? So several shoddy nodes found in the horizontal and vertical chains. And that is bilaterally. And femoral pulses were palpated bilaterally. Again, pulses brisk but not bounding. So James, we can go ahead and redrape now. Just get you to put that on. And then I'm gonna pull this drape just down from the bottom. So if you wanna untuck that for me, perfect. All right, James, so moving on to the lower extremity. Um, I'm just gonna take a look here first. So on inspection of the lower extremity, uh, there's no uh, suspicious nevi, masses, or lesions. Um, and then James, let me know if you have any pain with any of this. Any pain there? No. Okay. So no pain on palpation of the joints of the lower extremity. No pretibial edema. So James, uh, next we're gonna check the range of motion of your lower extremity. So I'm gonna have you bring your legs up to your chest and then back down to the ground and then point your toes up towards the sky and down to the, to the floor and then spread your legs apart and cross them over. Can you cross them over the other way? Okay, we're gonna do that one more time, uh, but I'm gonna have you resist my force, okay? So I'm gonna have you bring your legs up to your chest and we'll just pull that over. So resist, 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 resist. Bring your feet down to the table. Resist, resist, resist. And down here. And resist, resist, and hold. Good. So resisted range of motion of the lower extremity was five out of five for all muscles tested and active range of motion was within normal limits. So James, I'm gonna have you uh, sit up for me now and we're gonna check the range of motion of your cervical spine. So I'm gonna have you just follow my movements. Can you look up for me? and down and over one shoulder and the other shoulder and bring your ear to your shoulder and the other shoulder. Great, so active range of motion of the cervical spine within normal limits and then just taking a look at the upper extremity. Uh, again, muscle tone is symmetrical bilaterally and feeling the joints, let me know if you have any pain with this. That's okay. And no pain there. No. Okay, so no pain on palpation of the joints of the upper extremity. So James, I'm gonna have you follow my movements again. So bring your arms up to the side and back down, cross them over and bring them up here like this and back down and then just straight out in front of you and back behind you 
Perfect. So active range of motion within normal limits. And James, I'm going to have you make this motion for me. And I'm going to have you just resist me again, okay? okay. So resist, hold, resist, keep holding. Good. And I'm going to try to pull you out of this. Don't let me. Good. And can you do this with your fingers? I'm going to try to pull you apart and don't let me. Good. And can you grab onto my fingers and don't let go? Good. And can you do this with your hands? And don't let me push you together. Good. So a resisted range of motion of the upper extremity, five out of five for all muscles tested. So James, next we're going to move on to the cranial nerves. So I'm going to be presenting you with what should be two familiar smells. And without looking at them, I'd like you to identify them if you can, okay? So can you close your eyes for me and plug one nostril? And take a deep breath in. Can you smell that? Uh, mint. Yeah, that's mint. Great. And we're going to do that one more time. Can you plug the other nostril? Deep breath in. And can you identify that smell? Uh, lemon. Perfect. Okay, great. And you can open your eyes. So cranial nerve uh, one intact bilaterally. So next, James, we're going, I'm just going to be feeling, can you bite down for me? And again, good. And now um, I'm going to actually borrow the back of your hand. And can you identify that as sharp and that as dull? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be just testing various places on your face. I won't do it too hard, I promise. And I'm going to get you to close your eyes and tell me what you feel, okay? okay. Sharp, sharp, dull, 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 sharp. Okay, and we're going to do that one more time with a cotton ball. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so cranial nerve five, motor and sensory intact bilaterally, and James, you can open your mouth. Next, we're gonna make some funny faces. So can you give me a big smile? And can you frown for me and puff out your cheeks? And then look surprised. Great, so cranial nerve seven, intact bilaterally. And next, James, I'm gonna have you lift your shoulders up and don't let me push them down. Hold, good, and I'm gonna try to push your head. Resist and resist. Good, so cranial nerve 11, intact bilaterally. So next, James, we're gonna be testing uh, your reflexes. So what I'm going to do is just have you relax your arm. Good. 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 Was that real? <laughs> okay. And normally I would do this bilaterally, but for the sake of this test, I'll be doing it unilaterally. So uh, reflexes were two plus bilaterally, except for the uh, patellar reflex, which was three plus. So James, next I'm gonna be testing your sense of vibration. So I'm gonna be placing this tuning fork either on your fingers or your toes, and I'd like you to tell me when you can feel that vibration and then when it stops, okay? Okay, can you close your eyes for me? Yeah, stop. Yeah, stop. Good. Good. One more time. Yeah. Stop. Great. So vibration intact in the upper and lower extremity bilaterally. And so next we're going to move on to discrimination. So James, I'm going to be placing what should be a familiar object in your hand. And without uh, looking at it, I'd like you to identify it for me if possible, okay? okay? So can you place your hands open in your lap for me? Eyes closed. Perfect. So can you identify that for me? Uh, a key. Perfect. And that one? A pen. Okay, great. And so next I'm going to draw a number in your hand, and again with your eyes closed, I'd like you to identify that number for me. Uh, one. Yep. Six. Perfect. So graphesthesia and uh, stereognosis intact bilaterally. And James, you can open your eyes. So next we're going to test your sense of pain and light touch the same way we did with your face, but over the rest of your body. So actually I'll get you to close your eyes again, and let me know if you feel sharp or dull, okay? Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Dull, 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 sharp, 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 dull, 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 sharp, 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 dull, sharp. Good. And we're going to do the same again with a cotton ball. So just let me know when you can feel it. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so pain and light touch, uh, intact in all dermatomes tested. And next, James, I'm gonna have you flip your hands back and forth in your lap as quickly as possible. Good, and can you bring them up here and do the same thing? Good, and can you tap your foot into my hand as quickly as possible? Great, and the other one? Perfect. 
So rapid alternating movements intact bilaterally. And next, James, I'll have you bring your finger to your nose and then touch it to my finger and back and forth as quickly as possible. Good, and I'm gonna start moving around. Good, and can you do it with the other hand? Okay, and you can relax. So point to point, intact bilaterally. And then James, I'm gonna have you bring the heel of one leg up to the shin of the other leg and just run it down. And can you do that with the other leg? And can you close your eyes and repeat that? Great, so heel to shin, intact bilaterally. And next, James, I'm gonna have you stand up for me. <clears throat> And I'll have you just follow my movements. So keeping your hips straight, I'll get you to bend forward and come back up. And can you lean to this side and to this side? And again, keeping your hips straight out in front of you, can you bend this way and the other way? Perfect. So lumbar range of motion uh, within normal limits. And now, James, I'm gonna have you put your feet together and you feel steady. Yeah. Okay, I'm here if you lose your balance. Uh, can I get you to close your eyes? Normally we would test this for 30 seconds, but James, you can open your eyes. So negative Romberg sign, and then you can stand with your feet shoulder width apart and hold your arms out in front of you. And can you close your eyes for me? Good, so negative pronator drift, and you can open your eyes, James. And now can you walk towards me on your heels? Great, and away from me on your tippy toes. And then back towards me, heel to shin like this, or heel to toe, sorry, great and away from me just as you normally would. Okay, so gait was smooth and coordinated. James, that ends our physical exam. Did you have any questions for me? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs>